Hey everybody, tonight's video is called The Burden Against Babylon, and tonight we continue our pass-through study here in the book of Isaiah. We're going to be looking at the burden of Babylon. So from this point, chapter 13 through 23, we're going to see a few different prophecies against other nations outside is, uh, Israel and Judea. And so now we have the batter up first off of the nations we're going to be looking at of Babylon in chapters 13 and 14. So to kick this off, Isaiah 13 verse 1 says, The burden against Babylon which Isaiah the son of Amos saw. So from here through chapter 14 verse 24, it covers specifically Babylon. And at the times of this prophecy, Babylon wasn't a world power yet. And Isaiah foresaw a time when Babylon would dominate Assyria. And in the sense of having heavy responsibility to deliver this message that's a burden, burden is used 15 times across the Old Testament, especially with a high focus in the prophet Isaiah's book, as well as Lamentations 2.14, Nahum 1.1, Habakkuk 1.1. In Zechariah 9 1, Zechariah 12 1, and Malachi 1 1. And this chapter today foretells of the city's destruction. And this prophecy was likely never seen or heard of those in Babylon, but it showed God's people that God was just and that God would judge the wicked nations around them that rose against them. And these nations come against God's chosen, and God shows his love to his chosen people by announcing his vengeance against their enemies. In verse 2 through 8, it says, Lift up a banner on the high mountain. Raise your voice to them. Wave your hand that they may enter the gates of the nobles. I have commanded my sanctified ones. I have also called my mighty ones for my anger. Those who reject in my exaltation, the noise of the multitude in the mountains, like that of many people, a tumult a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms and nations gathered together. The Lord of hosts musters the army for battle. They come from a far country, from the end of heaven. The Lord and his weapons of indignation to destroy the whole land. Wail for the day of the Lord is at hand. It will come as destruction from the Almighty. Therefore, all hands will be limp. Every man's heart will melt and they will be afraid. Pangs and sorrows will take hold of them. They will be in pain as a woman in childbirth. They will be amazed at one another. Their faces will be like flames. So as in chapter of Isaiah 526, the Lord summoned the foreign armies to conquer Babylon and all her greatness. And the Lord acts here as a military commander. And the Lord told of his gathering of armies to overcome Babylon. And we see God's anger turned away from Israel. And now God's anger is focused on this oppressive foreign power. And we see that God uses armies as his instrument of judgment. And in verse 4, the anticipated end time coming of the Lord to crush the final Babylon. And the great noise, it exercises, indicates the exercise of God's power. And Babylon, as we're going to see coming up in verse 19, saw herself as the glory of kingdoms. Babylon thought, you know, she was kind of the America of the day. And the fall of Babylon to the Medes was merely a short-term glimpse of the ultimate fall of Babylon at the hands of the universal forces of God, as we're going to look at in the wrap-up. And from verse 6 through the rest of the chapter, we see it's going to describe the terror of the day of the Lord. And the prophecy looked beyond this immediate conquest of the city by the Medes to a greater day of the Lord and anticipated the final destruction of Babylon by the personal intervention of the Messiah. And in verse 7, we see heart will melt. I don't think their hearts are going to melt like chocolate, but their hearts melt. It shows courage that was to vanish, as also seen in Isaiah 19, 1, Ezekiel 21, verse 7, and Nahum chapter 2, verse 10. 
And it shows that they would be helpless, lacking the strength to resist their enemies. And in verse 8, we see the comparison of labor pains being used. And any woman that's given birth might not like these sections of the passages. But when you see labor pains in the Bible, it is a comparison to like a figure of speech in describing human sufferings in the period just before the final deliverance of Israel, seen across the book of Isaiah, Jeremiah 4.31, Jeremiah 13.21, Jeremiah 22.23, Hosea 13.13, 13, Micah 4.10, Micah 5, verse 2 through 3. And we'll cover more of that in our wrap-up in the New Testament. And usually, it was the suffering of Israel, but here we see the picture of a miserable Babylon. And in Daniel chapter 5, when Babylon is suddenly surprise attacked by Cyrus cleverly, the citizens of the city were completely shocked. And as I mentioned last week, my friend Brian Peckham is doing a study through the book of Daniel on his Facebook. And he just started that on Monday, so he hasn't hit Daniel 5 for another couple weeks. But verse 9 through 16, it says, Behold, the day of the Lord comes, cruel with both wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate, and he will destroy its sinners from it. For the stars of heaven and the, their constellations will not give their light. The sun will be darkened in its going forth, and the moon will not cause its light to shine. I will punish the world for its evil, and the wicked for their inequity. I will halt the arrogance of the proud, and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. I will make a mortal more rare than fine gold, a man more than gold wedge, golden wedge of Ophir. Therefore I will shake the heavens, and the earth will move out of her place, and the wrath of the Lord of hosts, and in the day of his fierce anger, it shall be as a hunted gazelle, and as a sheep that no man takes up. Every man will turn to his own people, and every one will flee to his own land. Everyone who is found will be thrust through, and everyone who is captured will fall by the sword. Their children will also be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses will be plundered, and their wives ravished. So, verse 9 through 16 might be a little disturbing with the, uh, the, the terminology that's used in these verses. But in verse 9 occurs when the Messiah returns in judgment on all the living earth. And in this case, the prophet moves forward to the Babylon, which is the final evil world city to be destroyed with all its inhabitants, as seen in Revelation chapters 17 and Revelation 18. In verse 10, we see star, sun, and moon. So we see that scripture often associates cosmic upheavals with the period of tribulation just before Christ's return in Ezekiel 37, uh, Ezekiel 32, rather, verse 7 and 8, Joel chapter 2, verse 10, Joel chapter 2, verse 30, 31, and Amos chapter 8, verse 9. And we'll talk a little bit deeper in our wrap-up on that as well. And so we see the Lord reigns over the entire cosmos. And the same sin of pride that led to Israel's judgment will now cause Babylon's downfall. In verse 12, human mortality will be extremely high, but not complete, as God will spare a faithful remnant. And I just want to make a mention with the sin of pride destroying, bringing judgment upon Israel and Babylon. That might be something we want to think about when we enter next month and people start having pride in their sexual and moral lifestyles. And America wants to celebrate it. But uh, verse 12, human mortality will be extremely high, but not complete. As I mentioned, God will reserve a faithful remnant. And Ophir is produced fine gold in the ancient world. It was gold fit for royalty in temples as seen back in 1 Chronicles 29 verse 4. And in verse 13, shake the heavens and earth will move upheavals are associated with the ones in verse 10. And these expressions show the coming of God's judgment against his creation. And the shaking of the world symbolizes the overthrow of all 
that unbelievers exalt as rivals to God. In Isaiah 2, verse 12 through 18. In verse 14, humans are frightening to the shy of gazelle, but indispensable to the helpless sheep. And the Babylonians will find the Lord as their enemy, and they will lose him as their shepherd. And all they can do is flee the land. In verse 15, 16, the prophet returns to the immediate future when the Medes committed all these cruel acts and captured Babylon. And these are the terrors brought by war. And, you know, I'm kind of going off of a premillennial viewpoint here. These verses are a double prophecy with a near fulfillment in which the day of judgment against the Babylonian Empire and ultimate fulfillment with the final day of judgment at the return of Jesus. So, you know, for the premillennial view, you have to hold to a double prophecy viewpoint with this. And note that the phrase day of the Lord, it actually occurs quite often in the Bible. It occurs 26 times in the Bible. And the day of the Lord, we should not think of the day of the Lord as like a literal 24 hours in what we call a day, but it is a season of judgment when God is going to make things right. And in, in, in the near fill fulfillment of the judgment of Babylon, it felt like the whole world was coming apart. And in the ultimate fulfillment, when Christ returns, the whole world will be falling apart. And Babylon, did you know, was mentioned 287 times in the scriptures, more than any other city except Jerusalem. And Babylon, in Genesis chapter 11, soon after the flood of where mankind formally organized in rebellion against God. So in the Old Testament, Babylon is associated with organized idolatry, blasphemy, and persecution of God's people. And one thing we should know about God's judgment is that it is unrelenting. There is no escape when we are under God's relenting judgment. And for, Chris, uh, for Chris, Christians, Jesus Christ is our mediator and our savior. You know, if it wasn't for Jesus and what he's done for us, coming in between us and the Father, we'd be under divine wrath as well. In verse uh, 17 through 22, it says, Behold, I will stir up the Medes against them, who will not regard silver, and as for gold, they will not delight in it. Also, their bows will dash the young men to pieces. And they will have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their, their eye will not spare children. In Babylon, the glory of the kingdoms, the beauty of the Chaldeans' pride, will be as God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. It will never be inhabited, nor will it be settled from generation to generation, nor will the Arabian pitch tents there, nor will the shepherds make their sheepfolds there. But wild beasts of the desert will lie there, and their houses will be full of owls. Ostriches will dwell there, and wild goats will capper there. The hyenas will howl in their citadels, and jackals in their pleasant palaces. There, her time is near to come, and her days will not be prolonged. So we see chapter 13 ends on a depressing note with verse 22. And uh, Medes, for a little geographical information, was southwest of the Capsian. It was north of Persia, east of Assyria, and northeast of Babylon. And they allied themselves with the Babylonians to conquer Assyria in 610 BC, but later with the Persians to cause the fall of Babylon in 539 BC. So Medes was a nation of like a backstabbers, you could call them. And from the near future, Isaiah returned to the distant future in verses 19 through 22. And obviously, Isaiah was unable to see the many centuries that separated Babylon's fall to the Medes from the destruction of the final Babylon by God that takes place in Revelation 17 and 18. But what we should know is that God will overthrow, rebuilt Babylon in the same supernatural way that he did the ancient cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. And the fate of Sodom and Gomorrah is a reminder of the total destruction that is the result of God's judgment. 
in verse 20 can never be inhabited best points to a future desolation as Babylon has never been void or inhabitants as cities and towns have always existed there. And just think about God's measure of judgment on human pride. That is what we should have in mind, how much God hates pride. Pride goeth before the fall, haltiness. Uh, pride goes before the fall in Proverbs. In uh, verse 21, wild goats sometimes are associated with demons in goat form called satyrs as Leviticus 17.2 and 2 Chronicles 11.15 mentions. Amen? Goats are demons. And so to wrap up here, we look tonight at the judgment upon Babylon, their burden. And Babylon is a symbol for ungodly nations. And I want to go over to the book of Revelation. We're going to be stopping in Revelation quite a bit throughout the study. So Revelation chapter 14, verse 8. It says here, And another angel, angel followed, saying, Babylon is fallen is fallen that great city because she has made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And so we see that Babylon is a symbol for ungodly nations. And in verse 2 through 8 of Isaiah 13, it shows an army that rises up against Babylon. And I want to look at Revelation chapter 18, verse 2, a couple pages over. says here, and he cried mightily with a loud voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become a dwelling place of demons, a prison for every foul spirit, and a cage for every unclean and hated bird. So the fall of Babylon should be cause of, to think about when the ultimate fulfillment fall comes at the hands of God. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 3. 1 Thessalonians 5, 3. For when they say peace and safety, they sudden, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. So, as mentioned in the chapter today, labor pains in the Bible is associated with of human suffering under God's judgment. And Isaiah 13, verse 9 through 16 shows us the terrors of the judgment. And I want to look at Revelation chapter 6, verse 12. Revelation chapter 6, verse 12 through 14. So as I looked when he opened the sixth sail, and behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became like blood, and the stars of heaven fell to the earth as a fig tree drops its figs when it is shaken by a mighty wind. Then the sky receded as a scroll when it is rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved out of its place. So this chapter ends with Babylon being laid to waste. Babylon will have nothing left to it. In Revelation chapter 8, verse 18. Uh, I think I wrote down the wrong reference point here, because there's no 18 verses. Make sure I'm in the right chapter. Maybe I meant 18, 18, 8. Let me check that one. Eighteen, eighteen, maybe. All right. I'm not sure. I, I wrote down the wrong reference there, but we'll look next at topical Saturday on Saturday, which will be announced on Saturday. And I know it's been quite a few weeks since our last topical, quick, short to the point type video. So I hope you have a great rest of your week and God bless.